Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new here, my name is Reagan. So today I'm going to be doing something that I was kind of inspired when I was doing another video. So I recently did a video about like, if I lost all my makeup, what I would repurchase. So I decided to pull everything that I have repurchased. So my caveats for this were like things I've either repurchased for myself or or if I've tried something, liked it so much, repurchased it for my friends or family. Um, that's just where I went with this. So maybe I didn't repurchase something like for myself, but I liked it so much that I was like, oh, Viv will like that. Like, oh, my mom will like that. Like, oh, Rebecca will like that. Like, those are my friends and my mom. So yeah, that's what I have done with this. Most of this stuff I repurchased for myself, just straight up. But then there are a few things in here I was like, hmm, I like that so much I got it for my friend. So let's roll in um, and start this shindig. got my water here. Okay. So I did organize this all into like base products, eye products and lip products. So just starting out, this is the uh, Kiar Weiss foundation. So I have this in the lightest shade, which I believe is like lightness or something. And this is the first luxury clean foundation I ever purchased. Overall, I'm not wearing this today. <laughs> I'm wearing something else that I'll mention in a second. But I have like this, it's very full coverage. It is a satin matte finish. That's the finish I prefer the most in terms of foundation. And yeah, you can get pretty full coverage with this. It's very versatile, you can get sheer, you can be light handed with it, heavy handed with it. I go both ways and I would purchase this again. Like this is the second pan I've purchased of it and I would purchase it again making sure it hasn't gone bad. Their products do smell off when they go bad, but yeah, I just think the coverage with it, and I do already have their like iconic packaging or whatever, so I think it's like $40 or something if I repurchase the pan. I like the coverage, I like the ingredients. It's just been a classically good product and stood the test of time for me. Okay, and then I did repurchase the Plain Jane Beauty. This is their Cream Minerals Foundation Stick. So this one also has not gone bad. This is the second time I purchased this. I have this in the shade I Am Graceful, which is their lightest shade. So this is more of a medium coverage foundation. And this is a true medium coverage. That's why I repurchased it because I purchased the Vapor Stick Foundation. It's like light coverage, very, very light their reformulation of their original stick. And this is a truly like satin matte finish. It's not really oily. I think it's kind of waxy, but that wax makes it like sit on the skin. It's not like a heavy wax or anything, but I just feel a little bit more wax to it. But I feel like because of that waxiness, again, it holds better on the skin. And I like the coverage of it. I like having just like a pure medium coverage stick foundation that has a satin matte finish. That's why I repurchased it. And then this is one, it's a bit of a sore spot. So Vapor, when they reformulated and relaunched, they went from Vapor Organic Beauty to just Vapor Beauty. I'm cool with it, it's what it is. I was like a stan of their original Atmosphere Soft Focus Foundation. Now it's just the Soft Focus Foundation and it's much oilier in finish. And just how it sets on the skin and settles in is not as beautiful as the original formulation of this. Like now it just looks a lot more dewy. Where before, I'm not saying it wasn't like a hydrated dewy look with their original formulation, but this is like dewy borderline oily and it just doesn't sit that well on the skin. So I did repurchase this for myself and my mom, and we both just prefer the original formulation and are a little bit, you know, bummed that it's changed because this was like her ride or die foundation too. It was so many people's. So yeah, that was disappointing. Okay, and then concealers. <sighs> I have loved my Fit Glow Concealer. So I have shade C1. I actually need to get a new one. This is the second or third one of these I'll have. So the next one will be the third or fourth tube. It just has such great coverage, guys. Like, it's more of a drier finish. I know that it's not for everyone. It's a bit heavier. I do like it, though. I 
don't like just put it all over my face. I really only concentrate it under my eyes and in like blemish slash problem areas and that's why I like it. But I know I have like friends like IRL who this is not their favorite concealer. Like they prefer the Kosas one. I don't like Kosas concealer. I think they're too yellow in tone and I do not have a yellow skin tone or undertone. And I also think the Kosas is too creamy for me. This is a little bit drier. It is a little bit heavier, but my skin likes that more. It likes the more satin matte finish than like a dewy finish. And it lasts longer for me and it just looks better on my skin. Okay. And next up we have the Active Lights Concealer. This is the under eye concealer in shade number three. If you ever purchase this, you need to be very specific specific in the shade you want because I normally go for like number one. Number one is more yellow in undertone and this product specifically goes by undertone not by overtone. So I like this and this is my second, third tube, can't remember but this is a repurchase and I think it's an even better substitution for like the YSL Touche Eclat or the Guerlain version that's like same thing but different of this. So it's like this pin with fibers at the end of it and you just apply it. I know that was really descriptive, but it looks like a brush and the brush is already on there. And then whenever you twist this bottom up, like the concealer comes up through the brush. And this is called the Active Lights Concealer. It has coverage to it though. That's the thing about like the Touche Eclat and some of the other like pins that like have that like active lights or like highlighting claim. They don't have coverage to them. They just are kind of like highlight for under the eyes. And I know that's, it's not like a glittery highlight. It's just more like adding hydration with like a touch of a little bit of pigment. This I would say is like medium pigment. So that's what I like about it. Like it covers blemishes too. So I like the multi-use factor of it. I would say it's more satin matte, but yeah, one I like. And then I think this is my second or third tube of this. It's the Hanscare, Hanscare, Han Skincare Cosmetics All Natural Concealer. And this is in Fair. So this is the lightest shade. I have liked this. I think it's a really good option for something that's like in the more affordable range. It's available at most clean beauty places where Han sold. And it just has some great coverage to it. So that's what I like about it. It's kind of similar to Fit Glow. It's maybe not as dry. Um, but you still get that more satin matte, which is what, again, I look for. So they've improved the shade range a little bit on this. Like these do not even have a fair shade. So I'm glad that they, like I can use this now, but I have liked it. I think it's a good product. And I would repurchase it again. Like basically all the concealers I would get again. So I did also repurchase the Juice Beauty Concealer in Buff. This is very matte and finish and it's very white. So the tone of it, and you can see I'm very pale. Like I'm not trying, like I used to actually think I was tan. I'm not, I'm well aware I'm not tan at all. But this, but even on me, like this is way more white. It's more of a matte finish. So if you have this and if you haven't liked it, I would recommend putting a little bit of oil, oil, excuse me, with it. But this is pretty full coverage. I purchased this and I repurchased this because it is so pale that it makes a nice highlight shade for like under my eye region or if I ever want to do a highlight combo. Highlight, I'm just flubbing up. <laughs> highlight contour combo, like this is a great shade for me. So if you're really, really pale, this is a shade worth checking out. Again, it's a buff juice beauty and it's even like too pale for me and that's very, very rare. Speaking of, Hint has an even paler shade that they initially launched. So this is Porcelain, and this is also one that's too pale for me. Um, this is a little bit softer and more emollient and creamy than the Juice Beauty one. And my favorite shade of it, which I'm actually wearing today as a base, is the Fair shade. I just think it goes best with my skin tone. It has more pink undertones to it. Porcelain, is a little bit more neutral and is for someone who is fairer than myself. So nothing wrong with that. You know, again, I could use this as like a more highlight type product, but I do love fair. I would repurchase this. This is like a cult classic in the clean beauty sphere. It'll probably be in my makeup bag for years to come. Okay, and 
when I get to the setting powder, I'll talk about that. I have a little bit of blushes to discuss. So the Kiara Weiss palettes, their highlight and blush, these are their newer inner light palettes. And I initially had these as separate bigger pans. So I was really happy when these came out because they're the inner light palettes. On one side, it's a blush, one side, it's a highlight. And whenever I had those original palettes that I had and then I got these again, they were just all one color. So the blush was the full pan, the highlight was the full pan. Well, I never reached pan on either one of them because I use this, but I'm not using like crazy amounts of blush and highlight, right? So this is like the perfect compromise for like repurchasing the blushes and highlights. They have a couple of options of this and I've really enjoyed it. I think their blush and highlight are some of their best formulated products, like truly. So yes, this is a very good one. All right, so I did have to switch out my battery pack. It died. But I have also repurchased the Ere Perez. This is their Bondi powder blush. I mentioned this in the like what I would repurchase if I lost everything video. But the reason I repurchased this, it does have a shimmery blush in it and a matte blush and you can mix them together to create another new shade. So I like the versatility of this. Uh, they did repackage this because the original packaging was really clunky. So I'm glad that they have repackaged it and I'm glad to have it back in my collection again because I think it's a good product. And then another one that I have repurchased for myself and also for one of my best friends. She lives in Hong Kong. So this is the Kosa's Papaya 1972 palette. So I got her a different shade because she has different tones than I do. But I purchased this for myself. I initially had their high intensity one that's in a pink shade. Papaya 1972, I'm wearing this today. Uh, both shades. I'm actually wearing it on my eyes also. They're just really like nice on my skin tone. They're a little bit lighter and more muted down. And yeah, I've just, I've enjoyed the palette. I would purchase this exact one again because I've swatched the other shades and they're all a little bit too deep for me. But that specific palette just works with my skin tone and I've liked it. And then bronzer, this is the only one I've actually ever repurchased. And I think this is like my third or fourth one of this. It's the Han Skincare Cosmetics Bronzer in Malibu. This just goes great with my skin tone for contour. Like straight up, it's a pretty light shade. They have three different shades of their bronzer. This is kind of more butterscotchy in tone. And yeah, it just looks really nice on my skin tone. So I would repurchase it and I have repurchased it because it's just like stood the test of time. They've repackaged it. Last I checked, it was under $20, but prices have been like going up. So I just don't know for every specific product. But when I first started using it, I think it was like 16-ish. Maybe it's 18 now. I have no idea. I'm just throwing numbers out there. Okay, and then highlights. So I have repurchased Ritual Defeat's highlights. So the first one I got, this is the Solaris Rare Light Illuminator. So it's a cream shade and it has more of kind of like metallic purple undertones to it. Well, I have this newer uh, shade that is Solaris and this is cream and undertone. It has kind of like pink, purple, and uh, peach tones to it as well. And this is a little bit more glittery. So I just really liked how unique their highlights are. I would repurchase them, I have repurchased them, and I just think they're pretty. Okay, and then I have this, and I can't remember, I think I had before today, and then I did repurchase this in Sing from Ilia. It's their Color Haze Multi Pigment. This is very pigmented, very beautiful product. Can use on eyes, lips, cheeks, and it actually works and holds pigment in all of those places, which is shocking. So it has kind of a unique metal applicator to it. Like I've never applied it like this or like this. Like I always just take a little bit because it's so pigmented, but I've liked this product. I think it's a good one and it's a nice multi-use. Okay, and setting powder. This one looks cruddy. It looks nasty. Um, because I used it so much. So I have repurchased this twice now, I think. It's 14E Cosmetics Aloe Nourish Prime and Set Setting Powder. This is so lightweight, makes makeup look airbrushed when you set it with this stuff. It's gorgeous. I won't go on and on about it because it's just really, it's good. And I've talked about it a ton on my channel. 
and I'll probably always have it on my channel because it's just one of the best setting powders I've ever tried. Okay, and then this I have repurchased. It's the Aria Perez Corn translucent powder. So the original one I had of this, I actually hit pan on because this was one of the first pressed clean setting powders. Not that there weren't maybe a couple of other brands doing this, but this was truly one of the first ones. So I like it enough. It is a little grainy under the eyes. So usually, whereas like with the 14E, what I'll do is I'll immediately with my big powder brush focus under the eyes first. Like with this one, because it is a bit more grainy, I focus on the perimeter of my face and then go in to my under eye region but overall I did like it and I think it's a nice one it's good at setting like more face makeup products it's decent at setting under the eyes when I do that method and then I just pulled this to <laughs> remind myself I have repurchased and I have it like in the bottom of an empties over there the and I'll have a picture right up here the Kiar Weiss setting powder I'm not going to repurchase it again and the main reason is it goes bad so fast like this is the second one I've purchased and I won't be getting a third one I think I just got the second one because I wanted like a luxury makeup setting powder that's in clean beauty but it just goes bad so quickly like it goes bad faster than their cream product so I just won't get it again I'm good with other brands and you know it's fine maybe I won't have a luxury <laughs> clean setting powder it's okay but I just you know third time nah I don't want another product to go bad on me and go bad so quickly sorry I just I got uh my stand ring on my apple watch but yeah I don't want to get that again because it just goes bad so quickly like I know my products are not going to last forever but like just that it's kind of shocking okay and brows and eye products I actually have like very limited of this. The thing I kind of have the most of is lip products. So the Plume Brow Pencil. So I have this in two different shades. I have Ashy Daybreak and Golden Silk. I have refills of this. So I have repurchased refills. It's a micro pencil and I just have really liked the refill aspect. Like you can pull this out and refill this with a new one once this is empty and I've gone empty on this. So Ashi Daybreak's a little bit more brown in tone. I've been using this lately. I didn't use it today, but I've liked this. I would repurchase this. I would recommend it. They have a nice shade selection. It's a nice micro pencil, very creamy, very easy to work with. And when I was filming something else today, I was reminded that this is actually my second or third tube of this. So this is Real nasty looking, but I like it. It's the Jane Iredell Clear Brow Gel. And I really liked this because it's really aloe and it just sets brows nice. It's basic, it's a very basic product, but I think it's like real good. And it's kind of stood the test of time. That's the thing about Jane Iredell is some of their stuff like looks more like old lady Estee Lauder-ish, but it performs well. And I think that is something about Estee Lauder. When I worked at Ulta, a lot of people loved Estee Lauder cosmetics because it performs so well. Okay, so eyeshadows. I have loved my Thrive Cosmetics Stella shade. This is their Brilliant Eye Brightener. I purchased this for my mom, so that's how I repurchased this. I love this champagne shade. Super easy for just like a one color, one and done eye look. I talked about this and I've talked about it quite a bit so I'm not going to mention it too much but it is one I've repurchased again and I got it for my mom and she really likes it because it's just easy for her to use. And then the Han Skincare Cosmetics All Natural Shadows. So this is one of the few like single pan shadows in Clean Beauty that they're packaged singularly or I'm sure there's a few more brands now, but they were one of the first brands that was doing this and with super basic colors, which can just be nice to throw in a makeup bag, you know, especially if you're traveling. So I have repurchased these. This specific shade is Celebrate. It's kind of like a golden champagne. Clearly there's like a theme of really basic eye <laughs> shades, but I feel like just on the daily, like that's what I use. So yeah, uh, I have liked their eyeshadows. I do have a palette from them now that I have liked quite a bit. It's good quality stuff. It is like in the more affordable category. So that's something else I appreciate about them. Just I like to have like accessibility across my channel. Okay, and then I've mentioned these a ton, but I love 
love them. So initially I had minks in the Victoria Beckham Lid Lusters. Well, now I have Tea Rose and Honey. The formulation is just unique, guys. It's a really easy one and done glittery smoky eye and I'm no makeup artist. I'm probably better than the average person at doing my makeup, but it's just super easy to use. Like Minx was like a super deep, purple shade. I was really happy when they came out with Honey and Tea Rose because the thing is when they first launched this product they came out with like jewel tones. No one... I know that that seems fun and maybe from a marketing perspective it's fun but I will always have Honey or Tea Rose. Like these are super basic shades that anyone can use and I probably wouldn't repurchase Minx. It's a really deep purple. It was fine when I had it but I just yeah, I don't use that kind of eye color every day. These colors I realistically use every day. Okay, so Burt's Bees Eyeliner. So I purchased this for my friend and I've repurchased other shades for myself. So I have this one in black. I have this also in gray and I think in brown as well. And I purchased for my friend, I think it was either black or brown, can't remember. But really easy to find at like CVS, Walgreens, great product very creamy, very easy to smoke out, but it also does have a nice bold line if you just wanna draw that on. So would recommend, have repurchased, just a great affordable option. And then mascara. So I did repurchase the Thrive Cosmetics, whatever this mascara is, that's like a really good tubing mascara. I did get this for my mom and she has really liked it. It adds volume to her lashes. And then this is my favorite mascara. It's the Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara. It has very nice definition and decent volume. So I've repurchased this a couple times I just think it's a really good mascara. Kind of enough on that. And let's get into lips. I'm wearing one of them today. So I have multiples of a lot of this stuff. That's why I think I have a lot of it. So what, well, I dropped one, one sec. What I'm wearing today is the Aether Beauty Protect shade, which is a little bit deeper, as you can see. I have a lot of these. And initially, I think I purchased trying to remember. A lot of them look very similar, but I have six of them now. And I really like the formulation. They're very pigmented. They're soft. They don't dry out the lips. And this one is a little bit more of a brown tone, but I found the more red tone ones stain the lips. So as they wear down, like I think it's Inspire. It's either Inspire or Ruby. They're both pretty similar. It's kind of a strawberry shade and it like stains the lips as it fades away to be more of a like a strawberry color. So they relaunched these. I've loved them. It has a great formulation and yeah, these really good. So same thing for Johnny Concerts liquid lips. So they sent me some. This is the first one I re or I purchased. I'm pretty sure. And then I got I purchased I then because the formulation so good repurchase this shade. So my two favorite shades are the Mon Cherie and the Lay Nudes. This is different than Aethers. Like Aethers are a little bit more emollient. These do dry down and hold more like a traditional liquid lip. They're not drying though. That's something I want to get clear is they dry down, but they don't move. This one does move a little bit. Like this has transferred onto my straw and stuff. Like a liquid lip doesn't always mean like a matte, super drying liquid lip. But these like, if I had this on right now, it would not have gotten on my straw. These dry down, but they don't dry out the lips. That's why it's such a unique formulation to me because the first liquid lip I ever tried was a Jeffree Star one. Um, and it just dried the hell out of my lips. That's all I'll say on that, but these do not, and they have great pigment, great lasting power. They only really have these two as the most neutral shades. The other shades that they sent me are just ones that I would probably not realistically wear that often. I have Nevermore and Rebel, and I'm just, again, I'm realistic. Like these are not my day-to-day -day looks, but like a more nude shade and a red shade I will wear. Okay, and then Carrie Grand Lip Whip. This was one of the first clean beauty products I ever purchased at Credo. So they had different packaging back then. It was uh, black and white now. It's a little bit more modern. So this is their Peppermint Blush Lip Balm. And I just like Carrie Grand as a brand. I like their lip products. They're really nice and hydrating and moisturizing on the lips. And they're really, really soft. 
they're just nice, nice and moisturizing. So I think this is like my third or fourth one of these. And I'll probably always have one in my makeup bag because I feel like it's kind of like a Clean Beauty Cold Classic brand. Okay, and then I got this at Credo a few years ago. It's, has this gone bad? <laughs> It doesn't smell like it, so as long as it doesn't smell like it, I keep it around. You don't have to listen to me when it comes to that, like, use your own discernment when it comes to, like, makeup badness. So I got the spicy shade of the Tower 28 lip. Was this a jelly? Yeah, their lip jelly. And then I did like this. Like, it's pretty soft. It's pretty affordable. I think it's under $15. So when they launched their Milky Lip Jellies, I did purchase some because I liked this so much. So these are not as I would say glossy in finish like they're they are lip glosses but they're a little softer the milky ones and the tones are a lot softer so I've liked those I think they're nice and I you know they're clean at Sephora so they're pretty accessible to most people most places and then Last but not least, Ficlo Lip Serums. So I just picked two randomly because I don't remember what the first shit, no, I do. I do remember. The first shit I ever purchased was Go. I was really curious about it. It was like a $42 lip gloss. And now I have like 10 shades. So yes, I've gotten some as PR, but I have repurchased other shades as well. There's one of my boys, there's the other boy. They know it's time for me to wrap this up. But I love the Ficlo Lip Serums. They're just super moisturizing on the lips. I will love them probably until the end of time because they're just super unique in the beauty space in general. Alrighty guys, so the sun is kind of exiting from this room and going that way. So my boys are calling me and it's time to wrap this up. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day or evening wherever you are in the world.